morning, everybody. This is Susie, and we are here to, and, and I am also known as Crypto Girl, and then we have Joe on the line, and he's the creator of the crypto indicators that we're all using. And we're going to go over, for your crypto class, the news, the overall market, some hot movers in the basket. Uh, yeah, actually, there are a few that are moving. Crypto screener review, we're going to look at the indicators, and most importantly, we're going to do question and answer with you. So please bring your questions. There is a questions box in the GoToWebinar chat box. So we'll be with, I'll quickly go through these slides and then it's all about you. Okay, so Susi Swap becomes one of the most used exchanges during the last 24 hours by Marcel Alzar on CoinQuora.com. Sushi Swap, a decentralized cryptocurrency exchange, is now one of the most used smart contracts among top 5,000 Ethereum wallets, also known as the whales, during the last 24 hours. The news came into a tweet on the official account of Whale Stats, a website that collects data around cryptocurrencies, NFTs, and Web 3.0. Furthermore, as mentioned on CoinGecko, Sushi Swap recorded a number of 253 million as its 24 hour trading volume, where users swapped 371 coins and 751 pairs. Meanwhile, Uniswap, which is another decentralized cryptocurrency exchange, scored 24 hour trading volume at 183 million. Use and they're swapping 1,520 coins and 2,635 pairs. We also have Pancake Swap, another decentralized crypto exchange, scored a number of 415 million in the 24 hour trading volume, and it was 4,279 coins with. 5,801 pairs. Thought that might be interesting to kind of look at an eagle eye view of what's going on with these decentralized exchanges. Now there's some stuff going on in Bahamas. Uh, FTX and Scara Moosey's Salt welcome 2,000 of the biggest digital asset backers to Crypto Bahamas. This is by Anna on thinbold.com. The Bitcoin 2022 conference in Miami added to the Florida city's growing reputation as one of the key locations for cryptocurrency and blockchain development. Now, thousands of crypto enthusiasts are now traveling to another major event, this time in the exotic location of the Bahamas. Specifically, an invitation-only event dubbed Crypto Bahamas is taking place between April 26th and April 29th, and its 2,000 participants will include some of the most notable names supporting the crypto industry, according to the event website, the information newsletter from April 25th. Some of the names that will join up for the four-day collaboration and networking, including quarterback and crypto startup investor Tom Brady and the former U.S. President Bill Clinton, who will be discussing topics from ranging from Bitcoin, BTC, NFTs, decentralized finance, DeFi, Web3, regulation, gaming, and more. Other notable speakers, including Galaxy Digital's Mike Novakratz, ARK Investors, ARK Invest, Kathy Wood, FTX Ventures, Amy Wu, and Katie Juan, and Katie Juan Adventures. Founders of new crypto unicorn like Circle, Dapper Labs, and Alchemy are also expected to join. And last, crypto mining ban will hurt New York and our environment by Kristen Smith on Blockworks.com. A two-year moratorium on proof-of-work crypto mining would have a chilling effect on the industry's growth in New York State, Blockchain Association's Kristen Smith argues. A New York State lawmakers 
will soon vote on legislation that would place a two-year moratorium on proof-of-work crypto mining projects in the state. A ban would effectively turn away substantial investors and well-paying jobs for New Yorkers. New York has always been an engine of economic and technological development, driving the growth and success of the United States in the process. Now, many in the state, including New York City Mayor Eric Adams, are envisioning New York as a center of cryptocurrency industry. Unfortunately, it appears that the memo hasn't yet reached Albany as state legislators are gearing up this week to pass a two-year moratorium on crypto mining, which will drive the nascent industry out of the state and potentially worsen current carbon emissions. The crypto industry is promising substantial investments and well-paying jobs for New York State side. Rather than create a regulatory environment that nurtures the industry, it appears the legislators are looking to snap it, stamp it out. After an initial but extremely close vote that passed the bill through committee on Monday, state lawmakers in the assembly will soon vote on legislation that would place a two-year moratorium on proof-of-work crypto mining projects in New York. Legislation such as this sends a terrible signal to crypto entrepreneurs and would have a chilling effect on the industry's growth in New York State. All right, so now for some exciting stuff, let's look at the overall market and Bitcoin and Ethereum market caps. So we are at $1.8 trillion. In the last few weeks, I think we went from 1.7 to 1.9 to 2.5 to 1.9 and now to 1.8. As you can see, I kind of darkened the lines here and rewrote them a little bit for you. Not rewrote the lines, but I darkened them. So you could see for the last seven days, we went as high as over 1.95 trillion and um, almost, but not quite yet, as low as 1.75 trillion. So that floor of 1.75 is definitely being fought out. And we are currently in a downward movement close to 1.8, but we're not there yet. So, but we are, we are, but we're like a little bit away. All right, so that is just a good visual for you guys to kind of see what's going on in the overall market. I'm excited because this is an acquisition stage. There are cycles, right? When you know tide is up and tide is down. So here is the seven day performance chart in market cap black size. This is one of my favorite places to go when you're new to crypto or even if you're not, uh, you just, if you're a visual learner, this is very helpful for you. So this is coin360.com. Um, I'm going to start with going over the words on the left hand side. Dark red means the price moved down three steps. So my arrow is pointing at very small box MIR um, because there were a lot of dark reds. You could see maybe one ONE on the right hand side of Luna that looks like a dark red. But most of the red we're seeing is the medium red, which is the price moved down two steps which is the DOT, D-O-T, the AVAX, BNB, Cardano, Ripple, Link, Uni, Sheeb, Crow, Matic. And then the light red, which means the price moved down one step, which is Bitcoin, Ethereum, Sol. And then you see like the big stable coins, USDC, USDT. Those are designed to always stay at a dollar. So um, those will generally bounce back to like a dollar soon. So that is where we're at on the red zone. So let's zoom in on the green zone right now. We have dark green. It means the price moved up three steps. Isn't that crazy? Something's actually making money right now. So, or, or moving upward. People could be making money in a downward market and an upward market, especially outside of the US. So the dark green right now is APE, app, APE. Um, that one is up. And then you have the medium green. The price moves up two steps. So that is pointing to Doge. It went up 6.85%. And then the light green is the price moved up one step. And remember, this is a seven-day chart. And Luna is the light green I'm pointing at today. At, it's up 1.51% for the week. All right. And just notice that you can go to this site anytime and you can click on that performance area where it says seven days and that drop down can go even as close as to one hour and as far as out as one month. All right. And then you can change that market cap to volume and you can also change the gainers and losers to just gainers and just losers. So it's a pretty exciting site. Really appreciate um, everything they're doing for us because it just simplifies. Also. 
I want to take note or make sure that you guys know that the block size means that it's it's representing how much money in overall crypto land on a percentage basis is put into that particular asset. So on the bottom of the Bitcoin block, it says dominance 40.56%. What that means is of all the money in crypto land, 40.56% is currently invested in Bitcoin. Now that's the only specific well coin or asset that we have that the system will put a percentage of allocation in. All right. But the way that you can determine how much assets or money or, you know, I guess we could say how much uh, is invested in each one of these other coins is by the block size. So you could see that Ethereum is the second coin dominating um, after Bitcoin. And then you have some competitors. You say Sol and Luna and Dot and Ripple and BNB and Cardano. Those look like some other big heavy hitters. And you'll always see that the, well, recently, let's just say this, that the stable coins get bigger when the market goes down because people are what I call perching their profits. So say they made some money in Bitcoin, they're going to sell Bitcoin while it drops. They're going to perch their profits in a stable coin and stabilize their earnings. And then once Bitcoin starts in the upward movement again, then they'll put them back into Bitcoin. All right, hope that helps you guys. Okay, so this is the Bitcoin USD one week performance chart just using the radar, which is what comes with the Moonstream membership. This is for my Moonstream peoples. This is customizable on the left hand side. You can, there's these three dots when you get your radar on your chart, and you can click on those three dots and you can customize your time frames. And for the Time frames that just come already set, preset with the radar is the four hours, the one day, the one week, and the one month. And what that means is it's telling you on average for four hours right now, as you see the red arrow going down, that that particular time frame, the price is going down. For one day, it's going down right now. For one week, it's going down. And an average of the one month, the price is still up for the month average comparison to the prior month. So this is substantially powerful, especially if you, well, you've never traded before, so you probably don't know this. Sometimes traders have like four different monitors at the same time. So this really turns four charts into one. And it gives you a really good eagle eye view of what's going on. All right, and then we have Bitcoin. And this is the Bitcoin USD one week chart with the crypto mastery indicators. We have the early reversal indicator up top. And right now that red arrow is, is indicating that the price of Bitcoin will continue to go down a little bit. Um, or it, it's, supposed, it, it's forecasting, I call this my Houdini, it's forecasting it will go down. And then you have the trend indicator where you have, the, I've got the arrow, which is the second indicator down on the right hand side, you have no one or two, no numbers, and we'll show you exactly what the trend indicator is supposed to do in the next slides. But if if Bitcoin was moving up, you would see a one or a two or three there saying, hey, this trend is continuing to move up. Um, so then we have the TSI trend strength indicator, and you have the red histo, which is showing that it is the trend strength is showing a downward trend. And we have the signal line, and that is where you have um, a red line showing when it's going down and the green line showing when it's going up. And right now, Bitcoin, it's getting tight. So it looks like it could be changing direction. It hasn't yet on the signal. And volatility index, that's the, if you look at the, um, if you look at the lightning bolt, it says 26.48. So if you go below that red zone, it's oversold. And that technical number is called a tw is a 20 where the thick red line is and the line below is a zero. So when it gets into 20 and zero zone, that means it's hit a really good floor. And that's where I like to buy. So if we do go lower, that may be exciting if it goes down to the 20 or the zero zone because then um, it's a good time to scoop it up. Here is the Ethereum USD one week performance chart with the radar indicator. 
for the four hour, we're going down. The one day, Ethereum's up. For the one week, it's down. And for the one month, Ethereum is up currently. Um, uh, I was just looking for the price, but it's not showing here. But when we go live, we'll look at the price. I'm just thinking that maybe this is, for some reason, maybe Ethereum, Bitcoin. I don't know, 348. We're definitely not at $348 of, Bit of Ethereum, but it'll make sense we get onto the chart. Whoever just jumped on, I can I can hear some background noise. Just not sure if you could mute yourself. Um, all right, so we have Ethereum USD one week chart with the crypto mastery indicators. So here's the early reversal, it's going red. So it looks like it's gonna come down. And then the trend indicator, again, just like Bitcoin, it's not, it's not bringing in the ones or the twos saying that we're going up just yet. And then you have the TSI, which is the trend strength indicator, and that's showing the red histo, the down arrow. So that looks like it's going down for the week. And the signal line is getting tighter, so it looks like it may change directions. We'll see in the next day or two. And then the volatility index is at a 40.91, so it's what I call let the cake bake zone. It's in the middle. It's not oversold. It's not overbought. Almost like a sideways move. So here is our basket. We have got Bitcoin, Ethereum, Polygon, Cardano, Chainlink, Litecoin, Cosmos, Algorand, Harmony, Phantom, Solana. And most of these coins can be found on Coinbase. But as our classes have emerged and people ask questions and they say, oh, check out this coin or that coin, on our actual trading view watch list, we add different ones. So this is just our watch list is definitely deeply more expanded than the, that particular long-term list. So right now in our watch list, we have KNC, CRV, Darrow, and ZEC, and Yasme, which are, these are up for the week. This is upward trend strength, and sorry about that, Ms. Bella, is up for the week. So this is our watch, one of our, um, some coins in our watch list, but you can organize your watch list by the percentage of change, the amount of change in the price, you can organize it by last price. You can organize it by symbol name. You can also add subsections to your watch list to better organize what is ready to buy versus what is ripe and ready to sell. And these coins are up for the day, but I always look for the coins on the floor to be ready for my next buy. So there's another, this is the crypto screener with tradingview.com. And currently with the crypto screener, the strong buy within our watch list area is KNC, ZEC, Luna, and Darrow. And let's just get a little bit into what this is. Now, these are not prices for today. This is just, this one is just for examples. So you can color code your watch list flag so you can organize your crypto screener to just pull up your specific watch list. So for this example, I highlighted everything in orange. And on the left hand side, I just where it says ticker 13 matches, I clicked on that flag and I turned to orange. And then you will pull up all those coins that you've highlighted orange. And that way, if you didn't highlight that flag, you would have endless coins, like multiple different currencies, and it'll get really confusing. So I just wanted to make sure you guys know how to do that. And I just use this technology to find clues. These indicators, they come with TradingView and they're not what I use to really decide to make a trade but it's good for you guys to see what this is. I'm gonna show you some more deep dive data that you can get from this. So you can sort by moving average rating, and that's what they're, they're using these statistics to determine strong sell, strong buy, or just buy. And you can sort by last price, or by simple moving averages, so it's a 20, 50, or 200 day moving average. And then the S and the B stands for strong sell or strong buy. Now let's look at the indicators. So if you got the indicators, this is what it would look like on your trading view under indicators, matrix, and strategies. So volatility, oh, I actually did a star next to my indicators that I use for this class. And so under my favorites, I've already starred them. And you would find them under invite only scripts, which is the one, two, three, four, five like five down. But then when you put a star next to them, you can just pull up favorites and those particular ones pop up under your favorites. 
So we're going to go over volatility index, ERI, early reversal indicator. The We're going to skip the dynamic ATR. We'll go over that live. The trend indicator, TSI, radar, and signal line. So the radar 1.0, it's used to organize your watch list. It confirms trade progression. It shows four different time charts or charts times. It can be applied to multiple indicators and it allows you to see four plus time frame trend directions on one chart. So you can also click on the gearbox on the radar on the upper left hand area of your screen when you have your trading view open and you can click on that little little spike and you can customize your time frames in there the time frames that come with the radar that are already programmed are 60 minutes four hours one day and one week then we have the trend indicator the trend indicator it's used to set alerts so step one the key will pop up to indicate there's a great chance that an upward trend is coming so stay alert and get ready step two the bell indicator pops up you're going to confirm this is going to confirm the trend direction this means the upward direction is strong and you may want to take action step three the numbers one through seven confirms the trend direction with these numerical numbers the one is the beginning of the first bar or candlestick from which all buy conditions are met and then number two to seven is the total number count of the present cycle if buy condition criteria are still met then the number count will then restart from the bell. So here's an example. So you have the, the key comes in, that's a key opportunity, the bell alert comes in, and then one, two, three, four, and then you see a dollar sign. That is really a five, but you can go in there and program your numbers and have pictures if you want. And the dollar sign is in there just to mentally remind you, it's okay to take profit, take profit often. Because, you know, if you're trading, if you don't take profit, then you're not going to make any money. You don't make money until you sell. Then you have a six and then seven is the money bag, again, to remind you to take profit often. And then if the momentum still exists, then the key comes in, the bell comes in, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then out. And you can see how this trend stopped at the key, the bell, and then the one didn't come in. And that's kind of where we're at today. We have the the some of these i think in the theory and we just saw that the, the key and the bell came in and no one and no two so the market just resisted the upward movement and it it moved so downward so now you have the indicators this is my favorite the volatility index it shows overbought or oversold conditions and it's used with shorter time frames the signal line shows trend direction confirmation when the green linear average crosses the red, that's that red and green line with the gold line. And then you have the fourth one, the TSI trend strength indicator. It shows early trend reversal when the green plots start and it shows early exit reversal when the red plots start. It's a very powerful indicator. So I'd like you to zone in on that one today. And then we have the ERI early reversal indicator. I call this the Houdini. The green arrow up means conditions for a soon upward trend are present, and the red arrow means the conditions for a soon downward trend are present. So here is the example. So you also have all true range, which is something we'll go over live. And then the early reversal indicator is showing, this is just an example, this is not from today, that the, the, the Bitcoin was going, you know, the red was coming in similar to today, that early reversal that it's going to go down and then in the trend same thing remember i said earlier the key comes in in the bell and if there's no one you can show that there's some resistance in the force of the upward direction and this is crypto so this is what happens there's a lot of momentum a lot of movement and then you have the trend strength indicator and then that is where the um the green histo comes in and that the red had not shown that it was going down the signal line which is really tight when you have some separation in the green and the and the gold. Usually it's going to move upward. Well, this one it's tight. So then it's a visual reminder saying, oh, it's things are tight right now. It could change directions. And the volatility index is at 35.10. You can look at the lightning bolt. And that's in the middle zone. It's not overbought, not oversold. So there's nothing. It's just uh, it could go both ways. All right. And then you have the volatility indicator 
again, my favorite, and I'll explain why here. Volatility indicator measures how far the coin stretches away from its mean price. So when my coin or, or asset or whatever it is I'm buying or selling, when it's up in the volatility index overbought area, if you look on the right hand side, you can see that the overbought is line number 80 and it goes all the way up to 100. So that you could literally make an alert and you could specify what number you want to know when your coin is in that zone or at a certain particular number. You could say set your alert for an 88 or an 80. And that's typically it, it's a ceiling, in my opinion. It, it's saying, hey, like we're most likely at a ceiling. You better take profit now, Susie, because if you don't, you're going to have to have some good stamina and long term hold because what goes up goes down, what goes down goes up. And on the same situation, let's put our eyes down on the, on the red zone on the bottom. This thick red line is the number 20, and the thin red line is a zero. So I get super excited when we hit floors because that's my acquisition. So if I've done my homework, if I followed my indicators, if I've sold when I was supposed to sell, then I'm holding. You know, you, you sell, you hold, and you wait until you get down to the red zone and then you buy it back. And then you ride the wave again upward because in the U.S. we are really most mostly only allowed to buy the market. We're not allowed to what's called short the market, which means we'd be betting that it's going to go down. So here's where I... I buy down in the red and then I wait until it goes up into the green. It doesn't always happen. Sometimes you just take profit when it's up in the, what we call it, let the cake bake zone, which is between the bottom area and the upper area. So this is all about you guys now and it's all about answering your questions. So I'm going to go ahead and pull up my charts and we'll look at the, the watch list. And this was the... Uh, and Joe is on the line. So how are you doing, Joe? Hi, Susie. How's it going? Hi, everyone. Good, good, good. Let's see if we have any questions. And I can pull up some fun charts. You know, what's interesting is that this uh, coin here in particular has just been going up the last uh, two oh. months. So it, it's like an example in here, whereas you know, this crypto universe doesn't doesn't revolve all around Bitcoin. There's all these other different opportunities other than just Bitcoin. And the Bitcoin may be sideways, uh, it may be lower like it is today, but there's still opportunity in, in this business. And uh, I think this is a good example of this coin here, whereas that uh, over the last few months, it's just been really strong. I think it's phenomenal. I have one indicator where I've actually put the radar on it. So isn't that interesting how it's going down for the day, but it's up for the week? Huh. Wait. Well, you know, today is a, is a day in here where is that everything is just uh, repositioning and consolidating. And, uh, you know, one of the things I wanted to cover this week is, you know, I like to call this what's next, <laughs> you know, because we, we kind of really been looking at things over the last uh, couple of weeks and we started to see the clues that first it was time to take profit, you know, and uh, yeah. if you uh, we have change one that chart over. Yeah, Pardon? I'll change it. Natalie said, Susie, would you go over how to set alarm as I'm having trouble making them properly? Thanks. Brandon, Gabrielle, Gilio, JS, Jan, JS, Natalie, Paul, Terry, Yolanda. Nice to see you guys all here. Hopefully you guys ask some questions. It's We've got 30 minutes for your questions. So, um, but do go ahead, Joe. We'll can look at your chart. And then when you get to a point where we could set an alarm, let me know and we'll do that. Uh, well, I mean, I, I just wanted to just first start off on the Bitcoin. Sure. Yeah. And uh, I, I just wanted to talk about this a second. Right. And, uh, you know, as far as on the weekly chart, the ERI and uh, you can see in there that uh, the, the last two weeks, 
we've got a lower closing price since we've gotten that ERI. And uh, this this is one of my uh, favorite indicators. Like I like this and I like the VAL index, but the reason why I like this is, is, is that this is something that when it triggers, you know, something incredible could be happening within the next 24 hours. And when I say incredible, um, I'm referring to a possible market reversal. And if you're really keen on utilizing the tools and you're able to spot this and catch this, you know, you set your alert, well, then it allows you to set the expectation to what to what's next. And in this case point, you can see in here over the last couple of weeks, um, you know, we've seen in here the market move lower from that. And, uh, and a lot of times in there, what you'll notice is, is, is that, uh, within the next, I, I like to say the next three days. So it's like the first 24 hours of the reversal, you get the confirmation. And then the next 72 hours, you really need to be on high alert because then you, you're looking at that follow through. And uh, we're on a weekly chart, so we're seeing that follow through on the weekly. And um, this week is, a, I think, it's a big week for the market because if you look at that, Susie, at them old lows, right? Yeah. The support that comes in down at like 35. Like that's the level that I'm really looking at. Where is that? Uh, yeah, we really don't want to see a close below that, like for the bull side. Look at this. Like when you go, even if you go down there, that's 49% off. So from where it was just in November 15th. So that's that's a really good, I would say, discount. Oh, <laughs> yeah, <tell>. yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's yeah, a really I'm good discount. Like a, I'm like, oh, my God, it's like the, you know, the, the, the cheap shopping clothes in the back of the off-season clothes, right? Like in the back of the store. And you're just like, whoa, I got a shirt like 70% off. So I'm just thinking, wow, as a shopper, it's just amazing. Look at that, 41% off. Well, and this shows you in here why you really need to be doing more than one coin. Because, you know, you can't force a trade to happen. And part of having the tools is being able to set the right expectation for your trading. So if you're looking to make um, really fast gains, and you have these tools and you see in here what you don't like. Well, you know, you set your alert, let the market come to you, and then you look for something that you do like, something that is in the condition um, where it can match the expectation and give you that instantaneous result. And uh, here, my purpose, what I wanted to just show was the fact that we got the ERI. And then if you look at the other indicators, Susie, right, you'll notice that the uh, radar stopped showing the numbers and it stopped showing the green paint and the TSI is going down. So for anyone in here that's in the Bitcoin, you know, right now and the positioning, um, this is a market is trading a little bit lower. So in this case point, you want to set your alert and, and let it put its low in, you know. Um, and if you look at the radar, Susie, now we got the daily and the weekly that are both red. So yeah. that goes into setting our expectation again. Like when you have the radar all red like that, set your alerts and go to another market. You know, but one thing, you know, that you don't want to do is that you don't want to, you know, buy the market right now and then be disappointed if it, if it doesn't move in your favor right away because it's not ready yet. You know, and this is like, you know, um, you know, we're cooking in the kitchen and baking the cake. If we try to take the cake out too early, the dough won't rise. So if we try to position ourselves too early in this without the tools confirming, well, then we're not going to get the right result that we want to get. You know? So Nicole wanted to do the alerts. You want to set them? You want me yeah, to do sure, them? Susie, if you, can, okay. if you can take them through that. So do you want me to set them on trend, TSI, signal line, and volatility? Sure. Like, so I go to the bell. I, well, what I, I'll, like, I'll like, let me go slow. So I'm clicking, I'm on the trend area, okay? And I'm just double clicking, I'm on a laptop. 
I'm going to click add alert. So I double click my keyboard, my like little, I guess your mouse, however you do it. And then that little uh, box pops up, pops up. Create an alert on Bitcoin. And this is the one week chart. So whatever time frame you're wanting to know about, you've got to make sure that you're on that time frame chart. And then I'm just going to say, um, I'm wanting to know when the bell comes back. Now, Joe, if I wanted to know when the key came back, then would I be able to actually do an alarm on the key or does it just have to be the bell? Well, no, you have to set it with the bell uh, because the bell is the actual alert to take action. You know, okay. when you get the key, you know, the key is letting you know, get ready. Okay. PTC. Bell alert. One week. Get ready to buy. I'm just saying a note to myself that's going to make sense to myself. And that's the alert name. But you're not really going to see that alert name message when they send, when trading you sends you your email. So I always copy that alert name and put it into the message box. And then I click create. So now that's set there. And the way to find it is you go to alerts and um, let's see where it went. Well, it's it's in here. <laughs> Sorry, guys, I've got a few alerts. Um, oh, we'll come back and look at that. But uh, well, here's one. It's active. When they don't go active, when they stop going active, you have to press the play button. So like these all got triggered, but these are the ones that say active or still active. So because it was too many, we'll just skip. That. Oh, so it just got alerted. BTC one day volume over. Well, no, that's a different alert. OK, so I didn't make that one just now. OK, so that's how the alerts pop up. OK, so let's do this TSI alert. So add alert on TSI. And then this is this and Joe, when you program this, this is only going to alert when it's going up, right? Yeah, yeah. And also keep in mind, you're on a, a weekly chart, right? So, you know, um, you, you can set your alerts for this. Uh, but, you know, being that you're in a weekly time frame, this is going to give you the alert, you know, uh, each week on the close of that bar. So. You know, um, if you, you know, after we show this example here, we can go to another market and show setting the alerts on the daily, which would give you, um, you know, uh, alerts in here for the week. Yeah. So maybe should I just do Bitcoin for one day to show her how to do it? Sure, you could. All right. So let's say so for the one day, Bitcoin is is you can see it's definitely early reversal. Um, it is that look at that one day has early reversal saying up. So my Houdini is saying it's going to go up. Add alert bell. I'm going to say BTC one day um, trend is moving up. That's just what I'm saying to myself, guys. You guys can say whatever you want. And then I'm going to click create. And then this TSI, I want to know BTC one day TSI is up. So trend strength indicator is saying up. And then I'm just going to copy and paste that there. Create, continue. And then the signal line, I could say add alert. And then to say, BTC one day signal line up. Now, Joe, do you want to explain to them the importance of having the one week in your favor? Oh, God, look. Oh, look. We, we gotta, can I just say one thing, though, before you answer that? The volatility index is at 19.53. It's super exciting, you guys. The last time it was down there was January in this area. All right. Very, very rarely do we see the, the one week get down into this zone. But 
I get super excited when they're down in these zones right here. Like, look at last time. This was July 2021 when it was down in this zone, and look how high it went. So this is a really exciting time. Look at this time. Last time, September 30th, when it was down in the red zone. Let, let's just take our little ruler here and say, well, when that happened, and it, it went to like 61% uh, up in 42 days. So, I mean, it just went down. We just recorded. It went down like 49% in the last... Um, hundred something days so there's definitely some some room for moving moving upward but this is a good time a good acquisition time right now so I'm excited okay um so I think the signal line I could just say uh, add alert on the signal and remember I said you could change the number if I want to know if it goes down to <coughs> let's say 10 that would be so exciting BTC daily volatility vol up we'll just say volley volley at 10. that means that to me what i know that means is that it's in a really low zone okay all right, so what other coins do you want to look at? I think hopefully, Natalie, that answered your question with how to set alerts. Well, well, you know, I wanted to look at one of the coins that we have in the basket, which is the link. Okay. And uh, I think on this example, we can be looking at, you know, uh, a couple of things with this. All right. You want to look at the and one week or the one day? Yeah, yeah, and this goes into, <clears throat> let's look at the daily. Let's go back okay. to the daily a second. All right, and uh, I always, you know, start off, you know, from where we're coming from. So if you look at the ERI, in the beginning of April, that was the first clue to take a profit right there. You know, yeah. so, and if you notice in there, like when we go to these examples and stuff, like I always really start, I always look for the ERI like when I first, you know, go to a chart because that lets me know where we're coming from. So I know that right now this is in a downtrend being that the ERI showed the red vertical. And if you notice, the next bars after that were just lower, lower, lower. You know, so, so once you take a profit on the ERI, you really want to stand aside because it's that powerful, Susie. And, you know, next, if you notice the trend, right when the ERI showed, the next day, the trend stopped showing pain. So, yeah. you know, that's another big clue. And it's important because if we're looking to set the right expectation, we're going to see it on the charts. And if we don't see it on the charts, it may not be ready, but that's okay. And in this situation, you know, the trend is kind of moving down uh, sideways to lower. And um, we're looking at the clues of what took place the last couple of weeks to get us to this point. And, and look at the TSI. So these are all good reasons which I'm showing of, of why you should have taken a profit if you're in this. Um, also, that if you are positioned in here and this isn't reaching your expectation right now, like you're looking for it to go up, it's okay. You just have to uh, let the market come to you. Um, next, you see the signal line and you also see the volatility index. So this is an example where all five chart overlays reached, I guess you could say your threshold, Susie, where yeah. is that? Like it went to one end of the spectrum too far. Uh, you know, up to the point where it has had to retrace. And um, in this case, everything kind of happened all at once. It, each chart's going to be different. None of them are ever the same. The only thing that we can do is, is react to the clues. And then once the clues start to happen, position ourselves accordingly. So when we start to see that the market is going down and the trend is going down, don't, the best thing that you can do is set your alerts. Yeah. You know, so... This is a good example of one you, you can set, see? Yeah, this is exciting. Good. 
when you have the tools, the game becomes fun. You know, you're able to understand and hear what's happening and how to position yourself. And that's, that's what winning is. You know, like, like there's always going to be that 1% that you can lose on this trade, but that's the business. That's what, that's what makes the difference between at the end, the winner versus the loser. The, the winner has to be courageous. And that's what I'm, you know, want to tell you guys that you guys have, you know, world class tools. There's people all over the world that's using these uh, tools, these chart overlays, and they're getting positive results. And you have these tools in your possession right now. And with these tools and this education, now you become the master of your, your destiny. And, and part of that is letting the market come to you not trying to force things to happen, setting the right expectation. And if things don't happen right away, don't be disappointed. Take a look at things, uh, take a look at things a little bit more in detail. And, um, you know, this is great, Susie, you set me alerts. Like if you're doing this and I'm doing this, I'm talking. Like I don't want to do this. <laughs> I hope you guys did. <laughs> I, I, can I tell them one other thing that's super exciting about this um, this ERI chart is sure. I love these Keltner bands and um, I really feel like Brett's the one that kind of like was he the big advocate of these it, they're phenomenal because what this is saying guys is that the coin is the price is below the lowest lowest line here so it's the, the next the, the, what these little things are the next point that it would most likely hit when it does move up is right here so that's 14 and then the, the highest expectation you should have in the most potential near future will be 14.86 so it really kind of gives you a very possible sell level so when i set my when i oh look did it really? It just says that the signal line just went green. Hang tight, guys. Sorry about that. Hold up. Hold up. So the signal line just went green. Well, it, it may be right at that, right in between that fine line there. Oh. You know, and, and if you have set an alert and it goes off midday like this, because this is considered midday, uh, I believe it's like four o'clock or, or after five o'clock Eastern time you'll get the final close of that bar. So sometimes you may set the alert and it may trigger like that, Susie, but it may be right in that gray area. And if that happens, then you wanna be looking in here at the, at the, what, you know, the final bar at five o'clock, because right now this is um, intraday. And intraday right now, it may be in that area where it's triggering it because it's going up and down. Okay, that make that makes sense. Well, what I just did is I just put a trade in, guys, and I, I wanted to kind of show you is it's down here. So I went below that middle Keltner band and said, all right, take profit. It's all paper trading. This is fake money. So if I win or lose, it's it, it's not going to break the bank, right? But and typically I usually go for thousands or you know, crazy amounts just on my paper trader. But for this example, I wanted these lines to show just so that you understand like what these kind of key target zones are. So you're taking a little bit of profit um, where you could set like your cell, so you can go about your day, you could set these alerts. And I definitely invite you guys to all do some paper trading. And um, I don't know what time we're at. We have like 12 more minutes, but that's something where we can kind of come back to this and see where it's at. But I did that because the indicator just went off. So now what I have to do is go back to my indicators and I've got to find the one that just says it, it triggered and I need to press play again. So play, play. All right, well, I'll, I'll do that later because I have a lot that need to go back into play. Um, there you go, there's that link one. So it may go off again. Okay, all right, so it's definitely green. This is exciting. We're up a dollar. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Right? Isn't that funny? Um, oh, and this KN is still moving up. So here's the other thing I want you, um, the reverse scenario, guys, is Keltner band 
is saying that this is in a dangerous zone, meaning like if I was holding this, I would most likely sell. You have the, you've got the Houdini saying, the early reversal saying, hey, it's gonna go down. We are way above the top blue zone, I would call it. Um, I would probably take profit there. Um, it, it has been going in that zone a lot lately, but you can see it goes up and then comes down and then hits that middle band and then goes up, down, and then it usually rests on that middle band. Or look, this one even touched the ultimate floor in floor, the forecasted floor, and um, and that's keep on moving. But anyway, so I hope that helps you guys because when you get into like the the all right, I own it. When do I sell it? Zone, and that's your next question. And then your next task is to when do I sell? So do you want me to go back to length, Joe? Because I love it when you talk. So keep going. I just wanted to show the Keltner and the you know, um, what I wanted to do was, and I was going through on here uh, on the trading view because, um, you know, I, you know, if we show an example of the market going down, we want to look for an example of the market going up, <laughs> you know, so you know what it looks like. So I, I found one of these markets in here we can take a look at, right? It's um, ST. P T. Okay, you will see. Um, on Binance, maybe. Yeah, try it on Binance. Second one, number two. All right, so you want the B U S D. Okay. No, I'm on U. U U S D. Oh, U S T. U S D. It's on. Um, oh, oh, so it is S T P. Yeah, S T P T U. Put the U there after the T. S D. Oh. oh. So this one. Yeah. Oh, maybe it is the same one. Here, let's go to, to Coin Market Cap right now and just um, Just make sure we have the credit. Yeah, right. the exchange, right? the exchange it says over here is H I T B T C. Oh. Standard tokenized protocol, and then here are the markets that they have it on. Is the one? Is it eight cents on the chart you're looking at? No, the one I'm looking at is fourteen, but the exchange is different. So if we go back to I that got, exchange. I think I have the coin wrong. That's what I'm saying. Am I spelling it right? S T P T. Yeah, well, the, yes. the exchange, what, what exchange are you under? Well, I'm just saying, like, is I, well, that one is, look, here's, this is coinmarketcap.com, and you can search all the coins here, but STP, that, that ticker symbol, STPT, if I spelled it right, it's eight cents. So I feel like I have the wrong coin. So what is, is, um, could you see the name of that coin so you, I can find the right ticker symbol? Well, if you go back to the trading view, right? Maybe it's me. The exchange that I have is HIT exchange, HIT BTC exchange. Well, I would think that the coin price, I think I just have the wrong ticker symbol. HIT. Yeah, I think Joe, I think we have the wrong ticker symbol. All right. But I mean, what is specifically your ticker symbol? Is H S T P T? On yours? Yeah. Well, you see how you got that one that's uh, on the uh, H U O B exchange to Hobie. Maybe it's that one I'm looking at. Standardized. What does the name of the coin say when you look at it? Does it say standardized tokenization protocol? Yeah, it's just what's different is my exchange. It might just be one of them odd coins inside of here. Let me just go to another coin. You know, when you go to some of these different exchanges, and that's why you have to have a, a good exchange that you trade with, because there's so many of these coins that they have that, um, you know, you want to be with an exchange that's liquid enough for you to get in and out of the market.
you know, it just so happens that we're in a period where a lot of these coins, you know, it's the time to set the alerts with them. Um, yeah, they're all going to swing right away. And, and, and that's usually how, how it goes in this business. You know, like, you know, everything kind of like consolidates. And then when it makes this move, you have to be quick to take action on here. You know, some of the things while well, Joe's looking for that, I'll show you guys. I like to look at the ones that are down the most so that I see I look for the floor. So he looks for like this area. I look like I'll just kind of scan. Ooh, that's exciting. That's at 4.12 percent. So when. And there's not a lot of data, it's a new coin on Coinbase, but when it's down in the, the red zone, it's super discount. So when I'm in the, the buy zone, I'll look to see, wow, good, it's 53% off, right? So it's not finished falling, potentially, maybe it is, but uh, 60 minutes moving up, but I like to look at that. See, this isn't on sale enough. But go ahead, tell me when you're ready for the coin. I'm just zoning in right here, guys. I'm looking for something that's super low. Ooh, yeah, like, look, oh, that's bad number, 6.666, phantom. <laughs> so that is super exciting. So it's it's nice and low. It's it's in that volatility lull area. And uh, it's definitely been moving down a long time. This collectively 65 percent 96 days. So when things reverse, that could be some super exciting stuff. Now Sushi Swap, which is what we were just talking about, that exchange. This is getting close to my favorite red zone, which it had a long time in that red zone. So uh, sideways city, I'd call that. But um, usually better, better chances of getting some good gains when you're really low, really low. So it's not there yet. I'm waiting. So I'm, oh, look at that one, 4.93 percent AXS. So it's exciting. So 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 to the floor. So um, Cardano's not the floor yet. Nice. And Mana is on the floor. That's a. Uh, go ahead, Joe. Tell me if you want to look at something. I'm just just showing everybody the my volatility index that I love. 6.98 percent. So, yeah, well, I mean, I'm going through these coins, right? And the yeah. thing is, is that um, one of the coins that I found in here. Uh, let's try to pull up this one. USD. USD CFS. Is it C as in? No, C, it, Frank as uh, F as in Frank, C as in Carl. No, no, C, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. USD, right? C as in Carl. F as in Frank. S is in Sam. So put the S there. All right. So can I go. put a, a spooky swap? Go ahead. So can I put the CFS in front of the USD? No, that's the symbol. Just go to the first one. Okay. On spooky swap. That is so funny. <laughs> okay. There you go. You know, and the thing is, is, again, like you see how like like I was just going through in here and you find these coins and they're at different. You have to go look around because sometimes it may be on another exchange. Wow. And, uh, and I just wanted to point this out because this is one that's um, been started to turn up over the last week. And this one really gained. And it's a really good example on this one because um, I wanted to also show the other side of the ERI. Of what happens when you get the green vertical line, and what happens when the TSI turns green? Okay. So, it, like a lot of times, like you'll notice, like I'm constantly showing you um, equal examples. And if I'm showing you the example on how to take a profit, it, it's only fair to show you how to enter. And if I'm showing you how to enter, I have to show you how to take profit. So, okay. in, in this case point, you know the ERI again is where I start from, and we got the early uh, indication and you can set your alert for that and uh when that eri says yes and the tsi says yes that's like a match made in heaven 
All right, so what I'll do is I'll, send, I'll show you a line. So here's the ERI. The ERI came in here green, and then bam. So April 14th, oh, like right before tax day. Right. And, you, and you know, anyone that's new and you're following along and you're in the demo and you haven't made that step yet, it's okay because what's what's happening is is you're seeing these repetition, you know, of applying the strategy over and over again. And at some point the dime will drop and you're gonna say, you know, hey, I, I know how to use this. I know how to do this now. And you'll gravitate to that success because you know, you're gonna have that intuition develop, that little fuzzy feeling that you get in your stomach that you know something's gonna happen, you don't know what. But just imagine if you have control of that feeling and now you're directing it to will the riches. You know, like you get that form fuzzy feeling because you've seen that ERI. Wow. Now you're setting up to do something significant because now you're combining the education that you got and you're matching that with the expectation of the market. And when this thing rolls out, it's just a matter of time before you have success like this. You'll have what I can describe in one word, fulfillment. You know, one word. So this right here was a good example, Susie, even though it's on the spooky swap, which I don't know really where that exchange is. <laughs> but, you know, the whole thing is, is that it's just another example because a chart is a chart. Yeah. It's got some great, it's, it, this one has some momentum. It Look how long, and this is not, this is not normal, guys. Like, I haven't seen something stay in this zone for so long it like literally stayed up in the green zone for 66 days that's exciting and that's the difference between long term like holding more than a day or uh like an hour you're gonna have a larger percentage and i feel like joe that's why you were saying like you always teach look at the one week chart because if you have the the week in your favor, which this one still does have the week in its favor, then you have a more long-term momentum to continue to get a higher return on investment. That's what I've just oh, yeah. I feel like yeah. the longer I hold, the more I make. This is a game of odds. And if you don't have the tools, guess what someone else does, right? Like this is yeah. a game of no mercy. Like if you if you don't take the opportunity, someone else will take the opportunity. If you don't have the tools, someone else has the tools. So embrace what you have, embrace the education, you know, and take your time, let it all come to you. Because at some point the dime will drop and you're gonna realize like, hey, you know, I actually can do this, I'm, I'm doing it. And I, I feel better than I ever have felt in my entire life. And that's a feeling that comes from within, from learning, you know, like I, I couldn't, pay to feel that way or pay you to feel that way i wish i could to give that feeling but that feeling is something that develops from within you and it grows and it you know you nurture it and um and then when that feeling you know uh, overcomes you then that's when you get what they call the magic glow you know and you're walking around like you know you swallowed the canary and nobody knows it <laughs> 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 well, I also, yeah, I, and I feel like they need permission to do nothing too, because doing nothing is doing something. And I and I know you think, oh my gosh, I need to, I need to make a move. I mean, yeah, you should be responsible and look at your, look at your indicators. If you are trading on a one week basis, it's a lot less movement that needs to happen. But when you're wa waiting for the cake to bake, that's like the the pause the do nothing but let the indicators kind of direct you as to when you set your alerts saying okay well it's time to take profit and if you don't then you better have some stamina because sometimes like after the after the ceiling is hit it you know it it corrects itself is that what we're going through a correction it's the wordings that people like to say little little community words <laughs> I don't know. What, what's yeah. the lingo? There's like the lingo. It's like a crypto lingo. So 
We are um, at 104, so we didn't have any other questions. Um, oh, one came in, but we, so we're out of time. Even when a coin in is on the floor in the volatility index, you would still wait for the TSI to turn green before buying, correct? That was from Terry. All right, yes, so that's Joe. correct. You know, and also too, you could scale in to your position. So if you see the TSI down there, you can go 25. Let's say you have 100 out of 100%, you go 25, 25, 25, or 20, 20, 20. You know, I you're not going to, yeah, like you're not going to get that actual confirmation until it comes out of the red, until the TSI says yes. So, um, you know, yeah. so, but when you're in that zone, sometimes it can jump so quick right out of that red zone that, um, you know, scaling into the position is the best thing you can do. So I'll go ahead and buy one on my paper trader so you can see what would happen. I'm going to set the sell for this uh, 2.05. Two, so I'm going to say two. So I'm setting it against this ERI chart basis 2.05, but I'm going to set it at two. And I'm going to show you. So let's just zone in on this. So I'm buying it. It's way below the Keltner band, way below that first particular, in, um, it's almost like first stopping point. Um, I'm buying it because it is so low in the volatility. So thanks for asking this question. And this is, you know, it's all paper trading, guys. And then I set my sell at this. Let's see if I can get it. Okay. So I set it above this. I was kind of using this second indicator to um, the second little blue uh, line here. I'll call it the ERI chart basis to base what the sell is at. And I was just I hadn't remember I didn't remember if it was way below this line so actually I should go back and check, change it to sell at 1.87 so let me see if I can do that 1.87 modify okay so see that so now so I'm buying it down here and these are the target points where the the math is saying this is where it most likely will hit so now it's set to sell so I don't do a stop loss, but I do do a sell. It could go up and up and up and more, but at this point, I'm just going to do that, and then I leave it alone. And then in the paper trader, it will show me that, that's, um, that that sell is in there, and it'll automatically sell it when, if or when that RNDR gets to that point. So when Joe, when Joe says 25% and I say 20%, it's because we have one, two, three, four, we have five indicators. So if, if I'm going in 20% on this one, 20%, 20%, 20%, 20%. The volatility doesn't really give you a, um, a bell or a star or anything. I mean, it would be kind of cool, Joe, I don't know if you could program it, to do a little like, Hi, a wave or something down here to saying like or like a red ticket or something like that. Say, hello, we we're really low. We are low. But um, but he's right. Like this is this shows, especially the separation here on the signal line, it shows that it's probably still going down. So that purchase I made is not hundred percent responsible, but it it you know, you wouldn't put a put a lot of money into that one, not a percentage at least, because there's still movement downward, all the other indicators. And we don't have an early reversal, but it's most likely quite, quite uh low. What do you think, Joe? Well, I mean look, right now we're dangerously close to maybe having a bottom, but we're not there. Okay, but we're dangerously close. You know, we are in the oversold zone with the volatility index, so that is valid, right? But out of the five chart overlays, there's only one giving you something valid. So, you know, I, I agree with your 20%. You know, I mean, it's down there if you want to scale in 20% there, but you're not going to actually, um, you know, start to see the bottom in place until you start to get some of the other clues because it can stay down there in the red maybe for a day or two days or another day so you got the first clue that something good may be in on the horizon so to speak and then next you set your alerts and when that tsi turns now you know you may have something good or the signal line or the eri so um i would say in there 
um, you could scale into this position and you could set your other alerts for the other with the other chart overlays and let the market come to you. Let it come to you. Don't try to force it. And then when you start to yeah. see the other chart overlay say yes, now you're going to have two overlays out of the five that say yes. And you're going to start to see the market conditions start to change. You know, it's going to start to become a little bit more hostile at that point because now you're starting to see these other mathematical conditions start to come into play. And that's what happens. Is, is that, you know, that's what creates this capitulated buying when markets put in their bottoms. It's because, you know, not only do you have one chart overlay or, or oscillator to say yes, but you got four or five, and then the market pops up 100, 200 points. That's all mathematical thing that happened, you know? So so the best thing you can do is is, is set your alerts accordingly and then as this great event starts to happen, which you're about to manifest, manifest, which is the success of a trade, you know, in the in the transition of that, you know, the alerts will get triggered and um, you watch it all evolve. That's how it works. Well, look at Doge. I mean, we're on a one one day chart, guys, but Doge has got the key here. Oh, well, well, it's disappearing. <laughs> Doge is coming on a one-day chart. So you just got to yeah. go. Your first step is to actually get your list going, guys. You know, but right now, it looks to me is that a lot of these things are are basing out. And like with the end of the month is this week, right? Yeah. So I would say in there, we got a, a new month coming. And this is a great time to set the alerts and uh, get ready to position. And join us next week because we'll be taking a look at everything new for May and we'll see if some of these alerts have triggered so that we can start getting some of these clues, um, especially like on that link. Because I, I got a feeling that we're going to see, like if you go back to that link, I think that's something there that we want to pay attention to come next week. I mean, this is a case point where, you know, all five of these uh, on the overlays are all going down. And um, I think this, we want to take a look next week on this one, definitely, for sure. Yeah, it's an 11 volatility. That signal line is is getting tighter. So, guys, on your charts, you can click on each one of these to make them bigger so you can see. Yeah, it's about, look at that. That is tight. That's going to flip. Well, we never know, but, right, it looks like it is. And then the last part about link that I love is it's just down here. It's on the very bottom. So it's got so much room to grow. All right. You guys are awesome. Thanks for attending today. It was so nice meeting every one of you. And Gilio says, how can you make visible label of ERI chart upper or overbought on the right hand side of the chart? Terry said, okay, thanks. Got it. How can you make visible label of ERI well, chart? Well, the, the ERI chart is also, when you get the ERI, you should also have, you have the ERI chart, and then you also get the ERI oscillator. And they both are the same. So, Susie, if you go in there and you apply the ERI oscillator. Do I go into settings, or is it an additional one? Well, it's an additional chart overlay, you know. Uh you know, so the answer to his question would be that if he wants to see an overbought or oversold condition, then you have to apply the um, ERI oscillator. That's it. And you want to start at Susie on our favorites. There you go. All right. I'll go and, back in. So, guys, sorry, and, I have uh, – well, all right, I'll do it. Uh, well, okay, it's in the favorites. So this is the ERI oscillator. Yeah, and, and uh, the answer would be is that apply your ERI oscillator, and this will show you your overbought, oversold conditions. Ah, so Link is oversold on the ERI oscillator. All right. Well, that's a great answer. Thanks, Joe. Thanks. All right, guys. You guys have a great week, and um, Jay said, so if radar looks all red, but weekly it's green, then we should stay in trade. 
Well, yeah, if, if, if the weekly is red, right, it may be in that, that gray area between it turning green, but you really want to have the daily and the weekly. That's what we're really looking for, you know? So, you know, the weekly is good to have, but if you don't have the daily, then that means that you don't have it for the day. So you know, when would he get out? Well, well, right now, like if you have, if you have the weekly, and the weekly is green, right? Then you can stay with it. You know, I mean, the whole thing is, is that you're not going to see the, 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 the a stronger market unless you have the daily. You know, because you know the strongest you can have is all four green. You know, but the daily represents that day. So, you know, usually like when you see the daily red like that, what the, what that means is, is that it most likely opened up higher or it went up really fast and then it started selling off for the day. Just like you see that bar right there. And sometimes the market can keep doing that every day. And that's why you might be saying, hey, the market's going up. Why didn't the daily turn red? Well, it just really has to do with how the market's moving. You know, like these are algorithm so some of the times when the markets move they move in a way where it's um you know the market will go up 200 points uh let's say it's 11 o'clock in the morning and then it'll spend the next 10 hours going down exactly the same amount that it went up so if that happens during the trading day such as it looks like this bar here if you notice how the bar is right susie but the bar put a higher bar a higher high in yeah okay that's why you're seeing the daily down in the other one but it doesn't mean that the trend is going to change it's just representation of what happens for today's trading day so the more green that you have the more odds you have in your favor the more cycles and when you have that weekly and the daily green then that's when you're going to really see it push like the pedal to the metal Thank you. That's a great explanation. It's going to take you a little bit of time to get used to the different time frames. So just hang tight with us. Keep coming and, and eventually you'll just like, okay, you'll feel it. You'll feel the rhythm of the market and you'll be able to look at some charts, some candlesticks and you're going to see things. But I, I would say if um, once you feel comfortable with reading other indicators, I wouldn't go at it without the other ones. I just, I, I need to know more data. <laughs> I'm a data girl. So I would say if you're just going right off the radar, it's a great indicator and it's simple. But once you feel like you can, um, you know, invest in some other stuff, I would definitely get the other indicators so that you could um, have more perspective and more knowledge. But so that's my my feeling about that. But then if you're a long term holder, then, you know, you could always all those radar it just it, it's it's all helpful it's helpful to know more than somebody else knows but um the radar is amazing and it's it's good to know what's going on in all these different time frames at the same time but i definitely like the other inter um deeper dive deeper diving information all right guys so that's it for the day. Have a great week and be ready for the flip to switch because it's uh, when it goes, it all goes down. It all goes up at the same time. So pick, pick your, pick your coins that you want to be watching, right? And get ready because when they all flip at the same time, it's going to be like, whoa, what do I do? Where do I go? Anything you want to? Any closing thoughts, Joe, before we leave? Um, you know, uh, let the market come to you at the end of the month. And, uh, you know, next week, uh, it's a new month, new opportunities. And uh, we'll find something in here that uh, should be ready in here to move. All right, guys. You know, Have good a... luck trading. Thank you. You too, Joe. Bye-bye. Bye, guys.